Yo, you already know what it is. Your boy DJ Filthy Rich. Yes, yeah, your boy DJ Big X. What's happening, DJ Smooth? I'm in the building. And this is the We Outside Show. We are back with another great, legendary episode with a legendary guest, the one and only Mr. Smurf, aka Mr. Collie Park. Park. Yeah, yeah. I had to put the Mr. on the Smurf because you ain't no kid no more. <laughs> grown man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's grown man business, man. How you doing, brother? I'm great. I'm good. great. Real good. It's good to have you, man. So uh, happy to be here. You was on our wish list. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause it we... took a minute. That must have been a long ass <laughs> list. Nah, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, you a busy you know, guy. The, ain't the like way, we could just say, way, "Come on." Smurf. The way Big X cell phone set up. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That too. But now we wanted you because, I mean, obviously you've been in the game so long, but you don't talk a lot. You know what I'm saying? Not on camera, anyway. You know, it's, it's a lot of um, Yo, shit. a lot of these. It's a whole generation of kids that just don't know. Right. Don't know. Shit. So you know what they say? They're gonna learn today. Okay. They're going to learn today. Let's, let's, let's tell them. Shit. Yeah. So I don't want to start with the basic questions like, you know, where you're from and all that. That's corny. You you Atlanta legend, man. So I want to start with the DJ and you because we're all DJs. We know a lot of people know the, the producer, Mr. Khaled Park. But let's talk about Smurf, man. I want to talk about back in the day DJing in Atlanta and what that was like for you. Don't lose my drive. Well, One of the I, baddest honestly, motherfuckers I know on the turntable. Yeah, honestly, say it say, say louder. Say it louder. One honestly, of the before, motherfuckers. before I went to college in, in 91, I was a mixtape DJ. Mm. You know, um, I wasn't a club DJ. Actually, I was in high school. So when I was in high school, I would do little house parties around the neighborhood, uh, pep rallies and shit like that. But then I didn't start really DJing out until I went to college. So I was a um, a mixtape DJ with the J team here in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, that was a mixtape crew, a DJ crew. Legendary. In Atlanta. And then yeah. so these parties, right? Do you remember your first big, big party? Actually, what I remember, what was my coming out thing was like a pep rally at high school because people had heard of me DJing or whatever, and it was this one little thing I used to do on my little mixtapes uh, and at the crib that I never did in, in public. And it was this record called I Feel Like Dance, and I would just do this little transform little thing with it. And uh, it was the first time I had really performed in public, but it was the whole school, the whole neighborhood was there. Yeah, and so I did. I came out to that shit right there, and they went fucking ape shit. Like I was a rapper or some shit, and that was when when that happened. That was it. Was it? I knew I won't do that shit forever. Well, ain't that the best feeling as a DJ when you do something in the house? You like, yes, I think this is gonna work. Yes, and it worked. And it worked. <laughs> and it worked. And it worked. Yeah. And, and it, I, yeah. I, I got a big X question. So when you did that show, was that a realistic mixer or a Gemini? Realistic. Yeah, I knew it. Radio Shack. No, that was Atlanta Stereo back then. <laughs> Radio Shack had them too. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I got mine from Radio Shack. There yeah. you go. Same All four channels up. Did it have a crossfader? No. Uh, the uh, same uh, one I had. All four channels up. Yeah. You just turn it sideways. Man, I was, I'm the youngest of six. We ain't have it like that. None of us did. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I got it. I had to get it. Yeah. 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 So. I got to ask you this. So how did you meet Edward J? Like like being a part of the J team was a real honor back in that time because Edward J, like a lot of people don't know this, Edward J really built a big name for himself in the streets because like back then you had to have an Edward J and that was before you guys even came on the team. Right. So how did you get with Edward J and started making tapes with him? It's so crazy that we're doing this interview because I just talked to the most deaf for the first time in like five years. I walked in the door talking to him tonight, and I ain't talked to him in like five years. Right. He was my MC. We went to high school together, and he lived with his mom and his stepdad, but his dad stayed in Decatur. In mm. Decatur. So he went to church where Edward J was a deacon. <laughs> deacon J. Yeah, yeah. So that was the connection. Right. Like he knew Edward J from going to the church that he was at. Mm. And so he made the introduction because I was like DJ Smurf from the South Side. You know, I, back then nobody had cars and shit like that. So uh, if it wasn't for him having to go stay with his dad every other weekend, I guess, I wouldn't have never met Jay. And so uh, that was the connection. We um, took Marta out there one, one Saturday. And uh, i never forget, I want to say DJ Lynn was up there the day I went. Yeah. And Lynn was was cutting. They had twelve hundreds. Like we we couldn't afford none of that shit <laughs> back then. So when I even me seeing some real turntables back then, and they had that big long the big uh, long mixer. Damn, what kind of mixer? And it was the first time I saw both turntables on the same side. Yeah, I used to DJ like that. That was that premier style. Yeah, Lynn had both turntables on, on the, the left same hand side. side, and he was he was in that motherfucker going off. And um, I, I tell people. 
there's no feeling that I've had. You could be in the video games or going to an amusement park or whatever it is you was into back in the day. But me going into that J shop. That was your toy store. That that was that was everything, man. It wasn't nothing better for me. Mm-hmm. Back then. You know, and I didn't even know it until it happened. Right. Yeah. So and, and after that, every time I went in there it felt the same. Right. Hmm. Yeah. So and then at and during that time y'all was there, y'all kinda y'all made these legendary tapes. Y'all had like pillow bass. Like how did y'all like end up doing like the double time mixtapes? Who actually came up with that? Well, I always tell people I, I got a mixtape. Um, because I made the, the fast and slow shit popular, right? Okay. That, that was me. Kizzy Rock put the mix, the field of bass with the Regina Bell, uh, the, with the, the slow bass, with the, with the slow jam shit. Okay. That was him. But I got a mixtape back in the day. There was no talking on it. And then whoever did this shit mixed Dirty Diana with Get a DJ a Break. Mm-hmm. That's the first time I heard that shit. Mm-hmm. And it blew my fucking mind. There was no talking on the tape. I don't, I don't know to this day who did it. Mm-hmm. But when I heard that, it just made me, you know, as a as a as a young nigga, I just started fucking with that shit, you know, and um, just want to give credit to where it's due. If whoever did that tape, if you still living, <laughs> if you if you see this shit, I gave you your props, nigga. So, <laughs> <laughs> DJ Ghost, right, right. So uh, it might have been DJ Dana. Yeah, it might have been DJ Dana, but so. The first time I did a fast and slow mix was the Bell Bill DeVoe. Uh, when will I see you smile again with tearing it up with MC Shy D? Okay. And that was, uh, 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 it was at the end of a mixtape. Believe it or not, me and Man, me and DJ Man, who DJ for MC Shy D at the time, he would come in and out of the shop when I started DJing for Elwood J. Right. So he came in the shop one day when I was making a mixtape. Right. I was at the end of, of side two, I want to think. He just got on and we just started going. Mm. We just started going back and forth on the mix. I don't even remember the name of this shit. At the end, I took either the acapella or whatever it was, and that's when I did it first time on the mixtape. And so the shit went so good that we made a whole tape the next time where I started the tape off with that mix. Right. And that was what birthed the whole Fast and Slow. And even Carl Moe will tell you he got the idea of my boo from that mix. Mm. So it started a whole era of, of shit. So... When you go back to that, right, and let's talk about the J team. Now, you you said a lot of names. You said Man, you said Lynn, yep. you said Kizzy Rock. Yep. The crew was just known for the legendary DJs, and everybody kind of turned into artists right. later on. Right. Like, what what did it feel like being on a team like that with so many great DJs? I'm such a student of the game, bro. It 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 didn't even I didn't even look at it like that. You know, it was just I was just happy to be there. I was who knew it was gonna turn into what it turned into. But at the time, I looked up to Man and Lynn so much. And then when Lynn and Lazy Rock got their deal as success and effect, right? Roll it up, my nigga, for y'all who go Google the shit. Yeah. Um, it was just like even when that happened, I never thought I would get a record deal. They were so up here, and I was just I was in high school, and so. It, we, I never looked at it like that. I just loved what I did, and I was trying to live up to what they did. You know what I mean? Because DJ Man was the coldest DJ I knew in right. person. Right. Like, people don't even remember that. Like, DJ Man was, like, one of the coldest cats on the turntable oh back God. in the day. Like, he was that guy. Right. Like, it, a lot of guys, a lot of us that DJ during that time, we looked up to Man. Like, we wanted to we, we wanted to imitate Man because Man was on the road with, 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 with Shy D. When he come in town, he would rock all the top clubs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I so, didn't even know. I didn't even know him like that back then. I just yeah, knew him from was, the records. Man was the man back in the day. <laughs> so, and staying on DJ Man, it was a couple of DJs who shaped that DJ style shaped me for the rest of my life. It was Man, it was Mr. Mix, and it was DJ Magic Mike. Mm. And I say that because if you listen to the intricacies of the way they they cut, it was like a a trumpet player. Or a saxophonist mm. or a drummer. That's the the yeah, the rhythm. feeling that they put into they into they scratches and shit. And so I put that in everything that I did from that time. My DJ style, my production style, everything came from that. So now let's transition from the DJing to Mr. Collie Park. Well, what Collie Park didn't even come yet. Come we tran we transformed from a DJ out of the J team into being a producer. Well, an artist first. 
Yeah, see, I didn't know you. Well, well, I didn't know you was an artist first. I thought well, you produced. Well, no, well, well, I thought yeah, you, you right, produced Chadi right, first. You right. You right. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. My bad, dog. I forgot who I'm fucking so sitting with. You know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My bad, big bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dog. Let's 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 go back. So, Shadi was the first. Um, it's funny we call it a placement now. I, I didn't know what the fuck to call it back then. <laughs> I know I did the beat for the nigga. Yeah, you know so that. yeah, yeah. So my first placement was when Shadi got out of jail. He signed the Itchy Bun Records. Shout out to Itchy Bun Records, um, which was before LaFace and So So Deaf and all that stuff. As far as where we could go get record deals back then. So when Shadi got out of jail, um, he went and got a deal on Itchy Bun and. I wound up producing like half of the album and the first single, which was mm. called uh, True to the Game, which was a tribute to my DJ style as well because it had like a fast, slow. Now, I don't want to talk about the, the sample that was in it, but it was a fast, slow beat, you know, and, and that was my first placement. That's how I started uh, officially producing. So w when you started, what did you start making beats on? Did you start on 1200? 1200. Okay. And, Cause he had two of everything. Cause he he was coming off. It's crazy. He had two DJs. He had Mike Fresh and Toon. So when I met him, when he asked me to start DJing, he had two sets of every. He had two drum machines. He had four turntables. He had everything too. <laughs> and so he let me take one of the drum machines home. So mm. that was the drum machine I did all that shit on back then. Right. Yeah. So that's what I started okay. producing on. So that so that got you started. So what made you start rapping? Just fucking around. You know, I never considered myself a rapper. Never. Ever. You know, I, I'm a fan of what I DJ. Mm. So if you, I tell people they trip out when I tell them, if you listen to my my, my uh, Drop Like This Bitch record, that that whole style that I that I use was a combination of tag team and home team. Mm. Hmm. Wow. I never knew that. Yeah, the cadence now, and the flow. Now, now, yeah. now go back and listen to them records. Wow. Yeah. But that's what made my style. It was like the DJ shit. Right. You know what I mean? I was just doing, mimicking what I was, you know, exposed to at the time. And what you like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you definitely, like, when we was, like, even back then when we was doing it, a lot of people don't even know this, we did, like, uh, Crank This. And I forget what movie it was in. Was it in Players uh, uh, Club? Uh, no, 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 no. It was, uh, was it in Fled. 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 Yeah. Yep. Fled. So we did a record called Fled, and that was like my first time really knowing you as a producer. Well, I, I liked the music that you was doing with Shadi, and right. I told Kizzy, I was like, yo, since we're doing the album, we need to do a song with Smurf Claus. During that time, I forget what song you had out, but it was going crazy. Yeah, Ooh Lord. Uh, Ooh Lord. Yeah. yeah. Ooh Lord was going crazy, and I was like, man, we got to do a song with Smurf. And Smurf gave us this beat, and I, I'll never forget it's this certain part of Planet uh, Planet Patrol you sample. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the Congas, and yeah. it was just going crazy. But it, it was so crazy, I liked it. And I was like, man, you got to rap over that. Right. And when he came, and when he got it, and it just so happened when, when that song happened, Dallas called me, and he was like, yo, I need a song for the, um, for the club part in this movie with Larry Flip Fishburne. And I said, yo, I just recorded a song with, with, with Smurf, and Kizzy, I'm about to bring it to you right now. Wow. And from that day, we put the song in that movie, and first placement. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit, nigga, we weren't getting no movie placements back then. And, and that was, and, and that's one thing too. We were talking about earlier today. Like even when you look at like the history of bass now, everybody look at bass like it's this crown jewel of Atlanta. But back then, people didn't look at bass the way they look at it now. It was right. like a sec, like especially out the the face hit here in Atlanta. Bass became kind of secondary yeah. to a mainstream rap in Atlanta. So like every was Atlanta. I ain't gonna lie, bass? I was bitter about that for for a long time. Yeah, I know a lot of us was because yeah. when you really looked at the scope of what Atlanta was, bass was the Atlanta scene. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you had kids, you had Kilo. That was it. You know what I mean? You had you, you had Shadi, you had Raheem the Dream. So that was kind of like uh, its own little scene. And then you had groups, Taz. You had so many different other people that came after us, even. From what we was doing, that's how the So So Deaf All Stars, that whole So So Deaf thing came about because John was seeing what we was doing and he went right. and produced a whole album of it. Right. But when you go and look at it now, everybody love they love it now because it's history, it's historic right. now. But it definitely wasn't. Uh, it Nigga, wasn't everything I've done in my career is like that. Right. Everything, because when when you when you are connected to when you are connected to the culture. 
you're connected, like like this this cord right here. Mm -hmm. And anybody out there on the outside, they don't know until it's you know later on. But I'm directly connected to what's really going on. And so the, the powers that be, people cutting the checks and all that shit, that's why they pay people like you. That's why mm -hmm. they pay people like me. They don't believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they don't. They don't believe in it, you know. And then the people... The people who are uh, who back then who had the budgets and all that shit, they didn't have to come down here and fuck with us. Mm. And so, you know, everything that I've done has always been directly connected to culture shit. And that's why when it was happening, the niggas was like, man, that's some bullshit, man. But I got a a specific part of the culture that I'm, that I'm targeting. Right. And that's uh, everything I've done has been like that. So and you swayed from like the like even during that time when I think we like right around the time like when So So Dev All Stars and that album really went big, you kind of went left and then you found Yin Yang. Right. Like how did you find Yin Yang? Um, working on a, on a DJ Smurf album. Mm. That's the first time they performed as Yin Yang Twins. Um, uh, it was a, a album called Dead Crump, mm. and I was just putting was that, that, that was a, that was, that, a, that was the Itchy Bun album too. Yeah, believe it or not, that's after me and Shadi split. Mm. And I left Itchy Bun, and I was like, fuck, I don't know what I'm about to do. I called them niggas back. <laughs> 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 and the crazy part is I got over double the money mm. when I went back by myself. Um, I think they might have felt like a shy was always, you know, shy. Shy was always protective and all that. So when he wasn't in the way no more, it was like, shit, we just, you know. And they always wanted to get, they couldn't talk to me like that, though, while shy was there. So, nigga, I cashed in back then. We <laughs> talked about that earlier today. But, uh, yeah, so that was the first album that I did um, by myself. Mm. And I was able to experiment a little more. Um, and D-Rock, who's one of the Yin Yang twins, was over at Itchy Bun as well. And he was working on the album. So uh, I, I wanted to do a beat for him. So we just did a swap out. Mm -hmm. And so when, when he got on my album, Kane was with it. And so that was the first time they performed. If you look at that poster, it says introducing Yin Yang Twins. So that was the first time they performed yeah. together. So let's talk about Ichiban, man. Ichiban was like the Atlanta Motown. Yes. <laughs> yes. And a Ran lot of, by two uh, Englishmen. <laughs> right. A lot, a lot of people, like, when they talk about the history of Atlanta, they kind of overlook uh, it ain't Itchy no kind of. When the last time you heard anybody say Itchy Bun? Like, and everybody that became somebody out of Atlanta was, like, especially during that 90s area. Like, well, come on, man, you had Yin Yang, you had Kids, you had Smurf, you had everybody, Kilo, everybody yep. that was Atlanta that was wasn't hot. The Who You With was on there too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Lil, Lil, John, yeah. Lil, Lil John, John was yeah. signed to Itchy Bun. Hell, the other Whoop Dead is this, was on yeah. Itchy Bun. Right. Vanilla Ice was on Itchy, Itchy Bun. Bun. So, uh, yeah, before, bro, before, before, before the hit. Yeah. 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 But no, it actually came out on Itchy Bun. But, but ice, something ice, happened ice. where they didn't they, well, they didn't well, have the well, version. Well, when the record got big, it got picked up. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew it was. I yeah. know they ain't get all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Not with Suge running around. Either, <laughs> so, but um, Itchy Bun was like the Motown of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And like everybody during that time, I remember being signed to, to Tommy Boy, and I had Kizzy over there, and I, I wanted to do an album on Kizzy at Tommy Boy, but unfortunately, they didn't get the vision. Right. They didn't understand Atlanta during that time. So I had to take Kizzy. Kizzy didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was left up to Kizzy, he would have stayed and just did another single over there at Tommy Boy. But I was like, nah, we can go home, go put an album, go put a full album out right. on Itchy Bun, and we can make the money independently. Right. And that was the thing back then. Like, now everybody's talking this independent shit. We was independent then. So like, that's what really I want to ask. And it was real record stores. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And consignments. Yeah. That, that is a big difference, too. So I wanted to ask about that because independence back in the day, it's not. It doesn't look like independence now, right? Nah. How were y'all? Because all the offices were in New York and L.A., right? Nah, so, Itchy Bun. Nah, exactly. So that, I'm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so Itchy Bun, Itchy Bun was here. Itchy Bun was in Kennesaw. There was no. <laughs> right now, it's, it's all some some. It's almost like a facade of independence now. Right. That's my point. It, it ain't no. Preach, there ain't nobody really independent. Right. Like I can tell you when I put out Yin Yang. Let me skip to Yin Yang, Southern Music Distribution, right? Mike Walker, uh, who pressed up everything. He took his little percentage. He pressed up all the product. He did all the distribution. Mm -hmm. But he also gave us our little allotment to promote with. And he would give, what, he gave me like 100 CDs or some shit to hit the streets with. This yeah. real shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we had to do our own posters and shit like that. And you had to get in your car 
and go. And go. And Fly that was it. real independent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like when we was doing Kizzy Rock and we was doing the, the, the when Shadi was doing the Smurf and he was doing Shadi. Real and shit. Lil John. Yo, bro, we was really out there in the streets with posters in hand, yep. with CDs in hand. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, this is my product. Yep. Support me. And we didn't have radio either. So no. It wasn't no internet, no radio. It was just, you had the it club. truly was yeah. the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah you had yeah, the yeah. club. Yeah. Like, yeah. Be, like a lot of the bass records that we had then, we really relied on the clubs. Because yeah. you know I, I bought all them records from the record store and Appreciate played you, all them records Thank you, brother. in the clubs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'm saying, like, was, was Atlanta considered bass or booty shake? Well, we call it booty shake. Yeah. Yeah. So Atlanta was considered booty shake, even though with, Miami it's, it's was somebody, bass. It's, yeah. it's funny that we even having this discussion now. Right. Yeah. yeah. But but it's yeah. Beautiful. Atlanta was booty shake. It was we yeah. always called it booty shake. It was Miami yeah. base. It was Miami base, but Atlanta booty shake. Right. Yeah. yeah. What's the difference? Atlanta. The vibe. The, the, the vibe. I guess it was vibe. yeah. It was the, yeah. the the city. Then Florida was a little faster. Yeah. Their yeah. raps was even a little faster. They had a they had a they had that like one forty tempo. Yeah. Like it, yeah. like yeah. Uncle Uncle Al. Uncle Al. They, real they fast. shit was just it was just big. our shit had had swag and it had yeah. melodies yeah. and. You know, it, yeah. it had some oomph to it. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. then even for Atlanta, what was it, like, 96 when, when My Boo dropped, it yeah. really went up yeah. through yeah. the... Yeah. Well, what, yeah. to me, what kind of changed it, and I, and I give kids this credit, is when we did that skate record and we put up skate up under it and then everybody was kind of... Oh, like, the um, Can't, Can't Stop the Rock. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. after yeah. that, that's when everybody yeah. started... That's what was on there? Yeah, that was like when it, the, under, the, the, the vocals that was up under that, that was the escape sample. Mm. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Don't say yeah. it too loud. <laughs> <laughs> you come back on your ass like that. Me too, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Me so, too, nigga. Yeah. Sample my shit too. So even with that now, with, with streaming, are y'all seeing anything from that that uh, old that music? No, no ownership, bro. We was straight artists. Yeah. Ah. yeah, that's the only thing about a lot of that back then. You know, Ooh. like because bass and booty shape, TikTok and all that now is like. Oh, now, man. if one of them shits hit, then I'm going to have to go see who Make a phone call. Yeah. 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 But back even the way TikTok is doing now, they're even speeding up all records now on yeah. TikTok. I don't know if you noticed that, too, which is directly going back to your sound again because that up-tempo right. was where everybody wanted to yeah. dance to. Yeah. That's yeah. the one thing about TikTok. Like, at old folks, we was like, ah, man, TikTok. But the benefit of TikTok is bringing dancing back, which right. dancing was right. really what Atlanta was about. Yeah. And, and there's another thing we – haven't talked about it. We got to say something with this guy. He's turned into a real big remix king and producer at the same time. Yeah, I see you've been doing remixes. Uh, yeah. yeah. I slowed down in the, in the recent history. Yeah. But, I, I uh, called this man and I was like, man, you know, there's a Southern Soul song yeah. that I think you need to know about, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Called King George and keep I, on rolling. And I think I had saw it one time. On, yeah. On, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I remember calling you and I said, hey, brother. That thing is, yeah. Yeah. So I'm his his remix is in full rotation. So that. now when you got now let me just ask you this now when you had um, Yin Yang, you changed the sound completely. You right. had a completely different sound. You moved. I did, but I, I did, but I didn't. I mean, to a degree. But I said this a couple of times. It's funny because because we, slowed it down. It, it was it was it was. It was the whole cash money, no limit shit. And right. then and then it was back that ass up and I need a hot girl. It was hot as fuck mm-hmm. at that time. So when I got Yin Yang, I wish I had the the the, the disc to whistle while you twerk. That bitch was about 138 BPM. <laughs> so when I got them, I just took the drums out and slowed it down. That, that literally was a booty shape beat when I did it. Mm, that, just, so that's why the energy is still there in Whistle While You Twerk. Because that was a Atlanta booty shake beat when I did it. I just slowed that bitch down and put the down for my nigga bass line up under it. Mm. Man, that beat. Wow. The <laughs> cheat code of the energy. <laughs> <laughs> God, bro. That's crazy. I'm trying to keep up with my man over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. And it, so, okay, did, was that intentional because of yes. what? Your production style, or because of the artists you were working with, did you want? No, them to I just slow knew down? we had to compete. Back that ass up was like the most incredible record I had ever heard. Yeah, when it was out, because I literally thought he had a, a string section in the studio playing that I had never heard that kind of instrumentation on no southern record before. Mm-hmm. Like, 
it, go just think about the instrumentation on back that ass up. So I was trying to get some shit to mix with that. Mm-hmm. And I remember down for my niggas the way that motherfucker used to drop in the club. The 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 tone of that 808 at that time. It's like that motherfucker just kept dropping and dropping. Mm-hmm. So when you go and listen to Whistle White Twerk, I toned the bass down. For that time, it was lower than anything out. And I just turned that bitch up. Mm. And that's why when it come on, that boom, 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 I was trying to do down for my niggas. Mm. This is why DJs are the best producers, though. Right. Yeah. Because right. you automatically yeah. thinking, like, I need something to go right behind this yep. thing right here. That's do how Donk came for Soldier Boy. How he needed something to mix with Beyonce. Good transition, because you know I want to yeah. talk about well, Big We ain't going Draco. there yet. <laughs> Big Draco. <laughs> Big Draco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, look, so, all right, no, actually, all right, so, yeah, we will be skipping if we go to Soldier Boy. So it was Yin Yang Twins first, right, the progression, and then and then what is it? Nah, then you had, then you had your hits with, like, I think you had Wobble after that? Well, it was, it was, that was the Soldier Boy era with mm-hmm. Wobble, but I had uh, the, uh, the Miss New Booty to play with David Banner. Tra- right. Trap Star uh, with Jeezy. And then it was those two, uh, those three BG singles after he was left. Was it for? Yeah. It was yeah. where they at. It was uh, I want it, and it was uh, hottest of the hot. So mm. those I had his first three singles of his albums after he left uh, Cash. Cash Money because he signed to Koch was the uh, which was the itchy bun of the north. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 this is what a lot of people don't know. Koch was the parent company of Itchy Bun. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh wow. The whole time the mean, Itchy Bun had a story. deal with. I, was this the whole time the whole, or, or the whole, afterwards? The whole time. Oh, wow. The whole Hiding time. in the background. Damn. Yep. So That's you learn great. something new every day. Yeah. It felt it felt similar. Now you, you just confirmed it. Yeah. 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 And you, oh, don't, yeah. you don't speak on it, Smurf, but you had one of those producer runs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you know, people talk about John and Jermaine and all that, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta I pop your a, shit, man. You had I, one of them run. Yeah, I had a few. Listen, yeah. so really, they it, don't want a lot of Kyler Park smoke in the verses either, it, man. Yeah. Well, but I, you know what? A- again, hey, man. I, because my songs, and, and I didn't realize until I saw Manny Fresh do his verses against Scott Storch. Mm-hmm. When he was playing them early Hot Boys records, them niggas was lost. Yeah. And he was in that motherfucker, you know, going <laughs> off. And I was at the crib like, oh, shit, he's dropping this. And Scott was dropping goddamn uh, 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 Steel, Steel Dre. It was a bad going ma- crazy. matchup. It was a bad, bad matchup. matchup but, but because of Manny's shit was so to the culture, that's mm-hmm. kind of how I sit. Right. So a lot of my records, like, nigga, if you ain't from here, niggas be yeah. lost and shit. Yeah, that's kind of like what I was, I was telling you that about the John verses. Right. I say when John was playing all that Atlanta shit, Nobody, everybody was like, well, John's tripping. But no, motherfuckers from was Atlanta was like, <laughs> you know what right. time it was. Right. off. Yeah, right. bro, you know what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah. All right, so look, we do have to take a break. We're going to uh, pay some bills. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be right back. This is the We Outside Show. We'll be right back. Yeah. Yes, sir. This is the We Outside Show. DJ Filthy Rich. Yeah, it's your boy DJ Big X. What's happening, man? Smooth in the building. And we are still outside with the one and only legendary Mr. Kylie Park in the building. Yes, sir. Damn, man, bro. That man, still on yin yang. Too. Man, I, listen, bro. I'm looking yeah. at my man in his camera, man. I swear you look like you about 21. Bro. Man, please. Man, you eating that good food. You eating that good. You, you got to be eating that good no healthy grays. food. Man. No grays, you know what I'm saying? Unless you got that Beijing pop. Come on, man. You know, come <laughs> on, man. Nigga, I don't know. The, time is undefeated. Time is undefeated. If you take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. sir. Yeah, but you can take care of yourself, though. Mm-hmm. Already. So, I, hold on. I got another thing, too, though, that we didn't mention, even with uh, pertaining to the yin yang. Y'all slick ran 106 in Park, too, for a minute. Yeah, bro. that's what I was about to say. Y'all did a lot of BT yeah, awards of and hip hop awards. Shouts out to uh, Brian Leach and TVT. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it started with Koch and D Sonoram and Shadow Stokes, uh, with the with the um with the I, I, I right. run. And um man, cause we we was on shoestring budgets back then, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we now talked we talked about, about that too earlier today. Yeah. We were about we were premier. <laughs> we might have been on that bitch two days and we'd be off, you know, because it was a, a promotion back then. You know what I mean? And so uh yeah, um, but you gotta think, 
when we had I I I and John was uh, going from Mike Walker to uh, TVT, he went over to TVT before us, and uh, I remember because we couldn't get on 106 in Park. I remember seeing John in the audience. What? Before they let him come on the couch, mm. so they put him in the crowd. So I remember seeing John. I was like, "Oh shit!" So in my mind, I was like, "Whoever's running that motherfucking company, they believe in this shit." Mm -hmm. So when I got off of college, because they dumbass, well, I ain't gonna call them dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is the truth, man. They did a one-off deal with me, mm. you know, which I own that album outright right now. They was my distributor, but I own the album outright right now because they thought we was just, you know, yeah. on, on our last leg or whatever. So when we got out that deal. I looked at the back of John album. I found the, the executive, uh, whatever Brian Leach was on there, and I can't remember how I got in touch with him. But I needed the nigga who put John in the crowd, <laughs> pushing my shit. And Brian's a good dude, too. Right, right. So I just knew who, niggas wasn't believing in our shit like that. Hmm. You know, and John, I used to watch shit. So John put the same record on three albums. Correct. That, that, that Ubi record, um, Nothing's Free. Still that shit was like on three albums, so they were pushing that shit. So I, I saw that. I was like, who does that? And they weren't doing the cookie cutter nah, promo shit. They was promoting. Right. So just so having it get low hit in between, you know, those deals. And so it was perfect timing because mm. Twins got, was on Get Low. Right. So they was able to do that video and go right into the next album. So being over at TBT, and that was like another big indie. Yeah. At the same time, Indy. they crashed and burned too. Yeah. What kind of happened over there? Because y'all was doing, y'all was really big over there, TVT, you and John. Well, everybody wasn't big. <laughs> it, it, shit. Somebody got to pay for this shit. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So, you you know, if everybody was doing what we was doing, then, you know, but, but I think Steve, and, and don't quote me on this, but Steve liked to stay in court with motherfuckers. And I think he tried one nigga too many. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, it came back to bite him in the ass. But I was gone to Interscope by the time he mm. he bit. Right. You know, my, my run with Yin Yang was coming to an end, so I had them jumped over to Interscope. So going over there with Jimmy, everybody wanted to work with Jimmy. Did you get a chance? What was that experience like working with Jimmy? It, he changed the way I looked at um, running a company, a label, because I'm a producer first, mm -hmm. right? And he was just... The, he he had everybody. He had Pharrell. He had um, Swiss. Yeah, during that time. He had um, Polo. He had um, Dre. He had Tim. Mm -hmm. He had all the top producers during that but, time. But nobody putting out no records. He had all these niggas, but nobody. So the speech he gave me is, why you going to give all your shit away to everybody else? This is your label. You make way more money if you hit at home then if you producing it, giving it away to everybody else. That's what made me start saying, I need to stop trying to get this short, short money, money <laughs> and really focus on being a label. Mm. So that's when I started slowing down doing beats because I had to put my energy where I was going to make the, the most return from. And that, that's what the fuck happened. Mm. You know what I mean? So Jimmy being a music slash, he had his vision he was telling me about uh, Apple uh, uh, subscription-based music back before, when he was saying it. It was like, huh. And he's talking about conversations he had with Steve at the time. Mm. And all this, even, nigga, we was one of the first people to have the Beats headphones in, in the Soldier Boy video. So all these things we was, like, at the forefront of, right there, but, but be, be a party to conversations before he would actually execute this shit. So... Just having a trust that this motherfucker know what he talking about. So when I took Soldier over there, it was like, man, the sky's the limits. If I'm over here with this, you know, and I just started focusing on artists more so than trying to sell a beat. So t now tell me the story, because I've heard multiple stories about how you found Soldier Boy. Mm -hmm. How did you go about, how did he even come to your attention? I was doing an interview. At the end of the interview, this dude was like, you still signing artists? I was like, yeah. And um, he showed me Soldier, And it wasn't very good to me at the time. And so I was like, yeah, okay. And mm. then um, fast forward maybe a month later, um, I was offered an opportunity to maybe take a job somewhere. 
to where I would I would sign artists um, to like a, 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 a incubator type situation. Um, so I started just looking for for artists that might not have been a fit for Collie Park, but I was just looking, mm-hmm. and a DJ named Freddie Hydro brought him to my attention again. And when he showed it to me, that's when it stuck. So when you so when you initially heard the record, it wasn't you didn't hear it. It was, it was Bapes. I got me some bathing days. I got me some. I was like, hell, man. <laughs> I, I was like, that ain't it. And I I told him like he used to get mad when I would say that man that, that shit wasn't it dog, <laughs> you know. But it was a couple of things. Number one, from a technical perspective, he was recording and mixing them records in his bedroom. Mm-hmm. On a computer, right? Yeah. With Fruity Loops. All that audio was awful to us when right. we got it. So, but, Before but, everyone, I think. Was he the first? Was yeah, he was the first, first. To do all that too, right? I remember even when he said he was using Fruity Loops. I'm like, Fruity, Fruity Loops? Loops? Right. Fuck? What is that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the whole shit was just some. I was like, but, but when I started diving into the music and shit, um, I just I, I just heard something as as far as a songwriter, and then seeing the fan base that he had built before I even got I got on the plane. Once I dove into that shit, I got on the plane and uh, went that went to Baseville, Mississippi. Well, I flew into Memphis and drove to Baseville. Uh, he wasn't in Atlanta. Hell no. no. He was in Mississippi. Oh, he was in Mississippi. Yeah. yeah. His mom lived here. His dad <laughs> lived in Mississippi. I'm just fucking oh, with you. Stupid. <laughs> stupid. He's from everywhere. He's from yeah. Compton too. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I found him in Batesville. Yeah. I don't know where he was before or after that, but uh, yeah, he was in uh, Batesville, and and I, I, we got on the plane and went down there. And shouts out to Miami Mike. I never gave him props because uh, you know if if he yeah if you, he wasn't but you there, gotta give Miami Mike some props. So you know he gonna man. I heard you on that interview. No, nah, man. You know, me, and my, me and Miami Mike. I ain't talked to him in forever, but um, he was a cool dude. Mm-hmm. Even for him to see it is wild though, because you're right. Like when. He's bringing you that bathing ape song, and you're like, "What do you think Mike saw in it before you did? Was he just closer to well, him?" Well, I don't know how involved Mike was before yeah. all this shit popped off. Um, but if Mike wasn't there, I don't know know if the deal would have happened. Mm. You know, so he was kind of like his big homie of uh, man. He's like protector. his big brother during that time, right? And so he was like, "Yo, he cool. Like, you know, you need to fuck with Kyle Paul. You know." And at that time, I had just put out A Bay Bay. Like we was coming off A Bay Bay. So we were hot as fuck. Hell yeah. At the time. So I forgot all about that record. Yeah. <laughs> he he blew my mind when he said Trap Star, because I I it, it went over my head that you did Trap Star. That's right. not I don't feel like that's big known. Like it's not. Yeah, yeah. I did, like Jeezy, right? Yes, bro. Yeah, I didn't when know he said you did Trap Star. Yeah, like, I didn't know you did Trap Star. Yeah. Nah. Is that common knowledge? Like nah. Why is that? Cause I don't jump up on the table and yell it. You know he ain't had no uh, your shit. tag or nothing. So all right. So what are some records that you feel like went over people's heads that you did that they may not even realize? Trap Star is definitely that's one definitely me. one. Um, that might be the biggest one. And, and personal to me is the BG shit mm. because that was that was Cash Money. Like he was that nigga, like the the underground nigga yeah. in Cash Money. If you know so, their history, you everybody right. know BG. And he I knew the, he was the kickoff. He was the one. Right. So and Yin Yang is the one that put me before I even met him. Top he was the one that they was listening to. So when that whole shit, when he went to Koch, he already had the song, but the version of the song just wasn't it. So it was a remix. The version that they actually <laughs> used to put out was a remix to the song. Yeah. And uh it's called uh, the hottest of the hot. So those three records right there and and, and, and Trap Star probably and even wobble, like people don't really know I did the wobble. Yeah, like, uh, and I wanted yeah, to talk to you know. about that because yeah. I was at that video, man. It was pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> See, and, and the reason why I talk about wobble all the time, and I, I think I may have talked about it on, on the show once before. Like, wobble was one of those records that, like, it came out and it didn't get really received. Or it flopped. You know what I'm saying? It, it boy. You know what I mean? So, and you, you I was making just it like, sound good. And I was just one of them guys that was just like, damn, why he do that? I, like, why Smurf do that? You know right. what I'm saying? Man, if I and had it, a it, dollar it for every time one of my people <laughs> told me after the fact. And, it, I, and I'm being honest. Like, when I heard right. it, I was like, damn, Smurf did that? Why yeah. Smurf put that out? Yeah. And then you fast forward two, three years later. That goes back to the culture shit. Mm. Shout mm. out, shout that, out that to the Chitlin circuit and the line dance. That, that record is, but it wasn't even the line dance wasn't a part of it when we did it. Mm-hmm. The record was just black. 
But now that record, when you listen to that record now, everybody it want, everybody want a piece of us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. Damn, that's go more into that. I want you to I want you to really go more into that. Because when you're saying culture, you're saying it to a bunch of black people, so we know what you mean. Right, right. But outside of us. So you you can even take the, the uh halftime record, the stand up and get crunk record mm-hmm. that everybody affiliates with the New Orleans Saints. Mm-hmm. Because for, for years that was the record that they would play when they scored. Um, they even invited us down after they won the, the Super Bowl to perform at the parade and shit. That was a HBCU record. If you're not a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I remember taking that record into Steve Gottlieb office at TVT, and he was just like this. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, fuck. We need to do a video of this motherfucker. Ah. <laughs> and it didn't do nothing when we put it out. Next thing you know, the daughter of the owner of the Saints played it one game. Blew the fuck up. The daughter of the owner. The daughter of the owner. What? They yeah. tell you all this shit when you go. Of course. Because right? <laughs> <laughs> we were shit. asking the same shit. Yeah. How the fuck? You know, and, and now everybody think that that's, a, a New Orleans thing. No, that was a black college thing. Mm-hmm. And you can't stop that once yeah. you, you know, once that shit connects, you can't stop that. Yeah, and that's legendary HBCU. Right. So, you know I mean? so right. really, a nigga from the A Town made a, a, a anthem for the Saints. <laughs> that's wild. That's what they say. That's what they thought. Shout, shout, me, me and my brother did that record. Shouts out to Derek. Yeah, tell me, my boy Derek. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, those those are a couple of ex- examples. Even even the yin yang shit, this Atlanta strip club shit. Oh Every yeah, transition. Okay. All, all this is culture. Yeah. Soldier boy was the kids. Mm-hmm. He might have been the most potent because he was dealing with kids. Yeah. Directly connected to their everyday lives. So, all of this shit is directed to the culture. It's like a like a injection. So when that record hit, which one? Um, the the uh, Soldier Boy, the first the, the Superman, Superman, yeah, you, mm-hmm. it went crazy. Yeah, what was that like, bro? And like, and I know at that point you had had some. I ain't success. gonna lie, all the way up until that point, it felt like we was trying to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like we was always this close. And you gotta think, I'm never the artist. I'm not the artist through all this. Mm-hmm. So I'm having to rely on other people to to take vision or to. It's a collaboration of, of vision. It's me being a platform and helping somebody else realize their vision. Mm-hmm. And up until that point, we w- we had just gotten that close. Uh, even from the way that the artist looked at the time. I had a marketable artist for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just remember, um, where were we at? When he did that tour, that first tour with, uh, it was Bow Wow, um, Little Mama and somebody else was on that tour. I can't remember. And um, we opened up that tour. And I remember every artist that, that went on, they opened up a little bit more of the stage. So we would go on first. So his stage was like this big. <laughs> Nigga, we put a fucking Atlanta talent show show together. <laughs> I brought some geek niggas in to p- help put the show together. Shouts out to Duvall. Um, and we put a real show. He bust their ass every night. But the first night was in, I won't say Bow Wow's hometown. Mm. And I just remember standing in the crowd looking at him on that platform for the first time. And he killed that shit so much, man. I won't say we had him come out and just stand in the stage like this for like 30 seconds or some shit. Michael and Jackson. Just to, we yeah. was on that shit. Michael Jackson there. Because we ain't had nothing to work with. Yeah. We ain't had no budget. We had a little RV rap like it was a fucking tour bus. Yeah. Like, we was on some bullshit. <laughs> but when I saw that, that's when I said, God damn, nigga, I could have I I I quit right there. I was like, nigga, this is it right here. This nigga, he out of here. We out of here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a superstar for the first time. So that, it was just, that was it. And he's producing the records, not you. Right, right. How did that even feel? Because you're right. So it's all that, out of your hands. That was, that, was, that was the Jimmy thing because I was being a label, not a producer. Mm-hmm. So it was already right. My pat myself on the back was not changing nothing, just mixing the records. For you, it was, for you it was more growth than anything right. else. So I was like, nigga, we just going to re-record this shit in a real studio, and I'm going to mix this shit. Matter of fact, we mixed the album here. 
Wow. World famous Snake on the Stick. John Fry mixed the whole album. I that said, John, I got like 12 songs. <laughs> <laughs> so I, he, he gave me whatever the price was. I paid him, and that was it. Wow. Mixed everything. John mixed most of my records here. New Booty, David Banner. He didn't mix Wobble, but John did most of my records. Hmm. Get Silly, all that shit. Yeah, I uh, forgot BC. BIC. That's the same thing. BIC. Wobble. That's the Wobble. Yeah. 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 Wobble. BIC. That, so that was his first record before the Wobble record. Yeah. And that was that produced by Soldier, right? No, that was me. I just that put his name on it. Ah, okay yeah. then. Yeah. We had to ride the wave. <laughs> All right. So I don't want to skip over. Oh, they don't know I did that one. Get silly. Well, get silly. Oh, you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that either. I definitely thought that was Soldier Boy. Yeah. And that record sound like Soldier Boy. And we we put the tag on there. Soldier Boy. Boy tag. Yeah. Doom, yeah. Doom. Boy got hits. Yeah. So I don't want to uh, skip over because we strip club DJs. You really had the, the strip clubs in a frenzy for a very long time. And that's real Atlanta. You know what I mean? So to come from your DNA is making booty shake music, people dancing. So when you're going in the studio and you're making these, obviously as a DJ, you're consciously making records that's going to make people turn up. So you had the strip clubs on Lock Lock. Yeah. How did that feel being the man of the strip clubs I, in I, Atlanta? And I ain't even no strip club nigga. I know. I never seen you in the club. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I ain't even taking no, advantage of it. Right, but. right. I ain't even I ain't even no strip club nigga, but it just comes from being a DJ. Mm -hmm. You know, hell, it's it to me it's it's harder to make regular niggas dance than it is to make a stripper <laughs> dance. You yeah. know, so <laughs> I just come from having to read a crowd and, and just knowing what moves the dance floor. So looking at the climate now. Like, okay, personally, right, and, and X can attest to this. It's smooth, too. We had these conversations all the time. Like, now, no matter how good of a DJ you are, because of the music that they are making now, mm -hmm. it is very hard for us to make people dance without going back to that era of music. Right. How do we fix this? Are you going to come back out and make something? Because the younger guys, like... We always sound old when we say, like, ah, oh, man, you need to make this, so we don't want to be those guys. Well, You know what I mean? Hookah music. To, to, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, X calls it hookah music. To be honest with y'all, it, it starts with, with, with the DJs. Like the, I was telling X today, the, the DJ dictate the crowd, not the crowd dic dictate the DJ. Mm -hmm. So y'all just got to find quality music and just go hard as fuck for it because it's gonna, it's, we back to that point. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say them this. BPMs are slow down a lot. We playing a lot of. Me and him have this conversation, <laughs> and I give it to him. We playing all the old stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. but most people are. Right. I I DJ. I just came from New Orleans uh, DJing the, the fucking Bacchus uh, parade at um uh uh, uh for, for Mardi Gras. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Nigga, it might have been. Sh my set was my shit. I played Get Low and fucking blow the whistle. <laughs> and and and, and no, nah, I didn't play Beyonce. But I'm just saying to be right. in, in that crowd, number of white people. Yep. It might have been five percent black people in, yeah. that night. Right. Um, but yeah, and, and all the even the the, the 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 other stuff was old school, throwback eighties, nineties, pop records, like because they don't move. This shit don't move you. Right. I told you. But y'all gotta find somebody that y'all really believe in mm. and, and really stamp that shit, even if it don't work. No, we looking, trust but, me. But this is my argument, and, I, and you know, we didn't, we, I didn't talk to you about this earlier today. I just feel like the texture of the music right now is all the same. I say it sounds like one big ass mixtape. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's horrible. So, and it's like, it's not that I don't like the artist. I just feel like everything is repetitive. Everything Everybody is. Everybody did. You know what I'm saying? It's Everybody like. Everybody did. How many times can you regurgitate the trap? Right. And and even 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 the way the music, from a technical standpoint, is mixed. Mm -hmm. Nothing has a feel. That's what I'm talking. The texture, the, right. the music. Right. You know what no, I'm saying? Nothing. You don't feel nothing. I ain't heard a record where I felt nothing in, in forever. Well, I felt like when they when they when they shifted to this computerized music, everything went over to yeah. like Garage Band, Logic, yeah. and they drew and they dropped the frequency down to you know two decibels. Yeah. I felt like everything just went numb. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And everything is every song is 808. Yeah. 808 drum sounds. Yeah. Before, what made hip hop to me was that, and what made a lot of DJs special was we we was able to go in and craft our own sounds by you know being able to sample different snares, different kick sounds. That and that's I what was made, always looking for that. Like that's how I stumbled up on the whisper right record. I was always looking for something that hit the speaker different. And and that's why I said you birthed and, and we we have Hanky on the other day. You birthed cats like Hanky mm -hmm. that had his own sound. And that's why I say the texture of the music changed. Mm -hmm. So when everybody is producing with the same thing, you kind of get 
the same music. Right. Well, y'all you know use I mean? the word feeling too, which music is a feeling, right? right? Right. A lot of these artists and producers these days, the drugs are different, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's like, just be real. So a lot of these guys. Shit, and, the, and the niggas listening to it taking them same drugs. And that's so. my point. Yeah. So yeah. they're making music for them, which is completely opposite of turning up and dancing and partying. It's like they trying but, to escape. Well, th that's why, you know, every once in a while, I, I you know, I take that back. Like, I really like Doja Cat. Mm -hmm. I, I really like Doja Cat. For real? Just, yeah. just because she's she, she came across as a real artist to me, just from listening to the records. I've never seen her perform live. Okay. Um, but just the dynamic of the records that she makes, um, is that's some artist shit. Right. You know, she's I, I hear talent. When, I don't know if she can hold a note. But at the end of the day, her records... See, and that's strange for me to hear you say that about yeah. Doja Cat. I definitely wouldn't have thought you would have said I mean, Doja Cat. You, really? you, you got to keep up now. Like, you can't be the, the, the angry old nigga, at, you know, standing that's behind him. the screen door now. <laughs> that's like, him, you Smurf. Got, you got you got to keep up. <laughs> that's him, Smurf. Yeah. But I, I'll say this, too, and I, I, I look at what you've done. I'm so sick of this word vibe. With your music, you made something that was considered jamming. Right. Hmm. So as a DJ, when, when the last time jamming, you used that word for something new? I use it now. Fuck that damn vibe. But ain't nothing shit. jamming, though. Well, yeah. I'm saying, yeah. what yeah. new? Nah. What new? That's what I'm saying. Song, that, that's what we used to say. That shit jamming. Jammin', that shit jamming. <laughs> but you say that, that word don't even go yeah. now, dog. If, if you say that shit now, they, they say, oh, that's onk them. Onk them, yeah. It's onk yeah, them. But it's working, bro. It's sticking and staying. A record is jamming. All this vibe and all this bullshit, bro. Yeah. New. But it goes back to, I say, like, you know, a lot of the producers are all producing the same thing. Right. So it's like, well, even back then when we mimicked people, we said we wanted to go make a song like a Dr. Dre, we wanted to do this. Yeah. It still had our identity on it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, these Because it wasn't cool to bite a nigga back then. Right. Exactly. Now it's cool to bite. You, you, don't, you don't even use that word no more. No. Because it's, it's irrelevant. Normal. It's irrelevant. Biting is irrelevant Relevant. now. Because it's cool. It's okay. Right. Yep. It's like everybody, it's, it's okay to take somebody else's idea and go run it up. Somebody told me everything that's bad is good now. Everything that we consider bad is it's good. good. Being right. a junkie is good. <laughs> Being a hoe is good. Right. Yeah. But, yo, stealing the nigga shit is good. good. Robbing your boy is good. Yeah. Everything is good. Snitching is good. It's good. Boy. God damn. That way, hey, bro. Uh, yeah. It's so, ugly out here. So real quick, just going back, and I, and I know just, just thinking about this, Knowing that you birth somebody like a soldier boy, and I want you know, and I know like when you birth somebody, you really be a, probably like you're like your child. When you see soldier boy go off on his tyrants on online, <laughs> how do you feel? I laugh. <laughs> I, I I laugh because I haven't talked to soldier in years, right? But I I know I, I could still see the, the 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 guy that the kid right that was in there. He's a master at this shit. And that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. He's a master at this shit. Because when I, when you think about it, I always I, I always go, I say, damn, I wonder this Smurf see this in this guy. You well, know what I'm saying? So so when we parted ways is when he was coming of age. I'm a music guy. Mm -hmm. So if it's outside of music, I ain't got nothing to do with that shit. Like I don't want to. <laughs> I can't. If it's not music based, right? Right. Um. And that's with, with any artist that I work with. You know, mm -hmm. any, first of all, if you don't want to work with me, I don't want to work with you. Respectfully. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I've always been that way. If you look at any artist that I've parted ways with, for the most part, it's been amicable. Mm -hmm. You know, because people outgrow each other. Right. I, the thing that I've never done is I know what I bring to the table. And if you can't see it, that's on you. That's on you, bro. Hey, I'm the nigga we, at the studio. We, we, Even from the music, I'm at the studio way after you go home. So mm -hmm. you don't know what the fuck I'm doing in there. You just know when that shit come on the radio, oh, shit, my shit on the radio. There's a reason why. Yeah, it wasn't like that when you left, though. Yeah. Right. That's I do, I'm all that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in, the, then I'm in the, 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 the marketing meetings. I'm in all that. Right. So, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, man, because we were real curious. We were like, man, did Smurf tell him, stop chasing out the Gucci man and go to Nickelodeon and Disney? Well, he had his own identity. And when he started aging, he made a lot of money on that first album. Yeah. yeah. You so, can't tell a young rich nigga what to do, man. You crazy. And you made a lot of money, too. 
Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he still look young. Come on, Life man. is good. Life is you, good. Don't put that money on hey, him. Man, you made you, some money, too. You, you get out of shit what you put in. You know what I mean? So, but, but I know at the age of 17 what check was, you know, that we cut to him. Right. Ooh. He made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. going Ring into 18, too. he was a rich nigga. Mm. Well, a rich kid yeah. at that time. Now, you said it right. Yeah, he was a nigga. <laughs> but, well, to, he, he still wasn't what, what we see now. Right. Back then, he was coming into his own. And I always respected his mind. Mm-hmm. When he was 16, right. I, I respected it because he was a marketing genius. Right. He was, he was, ahead, us, he was way ahead of his he time. He was showing Interscope record shit that they, he was the first one to say, fuck BET, put it on World Star. For the mm. turn my swag on video, he wanted to premiere on World Star. We had them master BT at mm. this point. We're like, oh hell no, we gotta go on BT. He's like, no, World Star is the shit. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, he was 17 at that time, telling a, a multi-million dollar company, put my shit on World Star, and he was right, <laughs> and he was right, and he was right. That's the Ill so problem. we let him do it. Yeah, so. As I know we got to wrap up, but I, I do want to speak on this too, since we're talking about Soldier Boy, to see somebody from the beginning, right? And usually you celebrate them when they're gone. What was it like to see him on that versus stage while he's still here? Like, and to go against Bow Wow, bro, and, yeah, and you do know, his thing. And you know how that was built up for a long time. First, first of all, let me just say this Bow Wow is a fucking pro. Yes. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> he's a- I knew what that was going to be before it was over, because Bow Wow. <laughs> Bow Wow's just a pro. He's a real kid brought up in this shit for years in this shit. So when it came to that stage, I already knew what was about to happen. I'm a stage nigga. Yeah. So I already knew what that was going to be. Crowd so control. I, 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 control. Was, I, was, I was proud to see the moment, but that's just, that's just two different things in yeah. my opinion. But I still feel like he did his thing. I think a lot of people oh, slept he on him. Boy. He soldier boy at that He soldier yeah. boy. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, we, There's a joke in my house, right? Because soldier boy is like everything that I usually, you would think I don't like about music, right? But <laughs> <laughs> soldier boy is, I didn't realize he's probably one of my favorite artists until the verses and my wife was cracking up because I'm watching the verses and every single song he come on, I'm singing that shit. And she yeah. like, you love this nigga. You keep acting like you don't yeah. like this music, but you love I'm like, damn. Yeah. I love Soulja Boy, yeah. bro. I love Soulja yeah, we, Boy. That first, that first album, and people don't look at it like this, is a fucking classic, bro. <laughs> it is. That, that motherfucker like ready to die around yeah. this motherfucker. Because oh, yeah. it make you feel good. It take you to a time. All them songs on that album, if you go back, you forget, oh, fuck, that was Booty Meat was on that motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you from... Booty Meat. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a Booty Meat. I'm just yeah, saying, for that, that shit. for that generation, <laughs> that nigga's yeah. report card, all that shit, a shootout. Yeah, you know all that shit was on there, y'all. All yeah. that shit. We can yeah, still get man. all them off too. Exactly. To this yeah. day, we can still get them off. Yeah. yeah. I want. So I want to see. All yeah. that shit. Don still is in, ro- in twerk rotation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell you. So out of all the artists that you work with, and we talk about a lot of artists tonight, like which was your fondest? Yin Yang. That's my legacy. Mm. Yin Yang is my legacy, bro. Like that's it's a lot went into that. Just even from their personal shit to you know just like. Them my little brothers, man. I, we, I got them out the mud, nigga. Right. And we, I was with them for years. See, Soldier Boy was with me for like a month before he was number one on 106 and Park. Mm. Damn. So that shit was bad. That was a month? Yeah. Yeah. That shit it came bad, quick. That, that goddamn MySpace went crazy. Bro, yeah. when, 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 when Interscope released that record, that shit shot the number one on iTunes with nothing. And this is before they iTunes were like, iTunes. They was like, what the fuck? Damn, I didn't know it was that fast. Man. It seemed like that from the outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but Yin Yang, you know, just from everything, the catalog, uh, the type of music, the whole Collie Park shit, Yin Yang. Yeah. So this is my la- this is my last question, and I gotta ask you this, and this is a serious question for me. Um, Atlanta's changed a lot over the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you see Atlanta going from now? After you seen all the gang violence, you seen everything going on. Where do you see the city headed now? It got it got to go back. When you, whatever, say, whatever, when you what, say go back. Whatever comes next is going to have to start from somewhere new, I think. Mm-hmm. Because they this done ran its course. Mm. There's nothing in music that we, we can talk about right now. Nothing that's new and fresh. That's the conversation us DJs having. We can't. And that ain't just Atlanta. Right. 
Well, I'm, I move outside. Everything is recycled. Every female artist that come before a minute, it was the female shit. Mm -hmm. They all look alike. They all sound alike. They all rapping about the same shit. Like everything done been did yeah. that's out right now. Right. So somebody going to have to come with something else. Right. And that ain't just no Atlanta shit. That's universal. Yep. Okay. That answered my question. That's it, man. I don't have any <laughs> questions either. I'm, I'm glad you came. Oh, I have a fun fact. Okay. Fun fact. The very first industry check that I ever got was from you. Say word. S word. So I used to write for an artist named Pierre P. Stones. P. Stones? Yeah, bro. And my first placement was a song that I wrote for him that you y'all got put in a movie. First check I ever got. Wow. Yeah. See how small the world is? Wait a minute. What, what's your real name? Rich Graham. Filthy Rich. Bruh. That's me. I remember you, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you were skinny yeah, back then, yeah, though, a, nigga. Yeah. 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 He's a grown man. You know what? Carl told me that you had like a podcast or something that you was doing now. This is it. This wow. is it. Shout out to Carl Washington. What up, big dog? Oh, yeah. Damn. Tell Carl. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, you got to check in, I didn't realize that was me, so I wanted to wait till the end. Damn. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah bro. Shout I seen all that shit. Pete Stones hate the fuck out of me. Well, he used to. Pete Stones was the first... Artist that I signed to Interscope before Soldier. Yep. Mm. He was before Hurricane. Yep. Wow. And when I signed Hurricane, that's when I was frustrated with him and uh, Carlos. Yep. And I told them when I got Hurricane, I said, nigga, I don't know how to work that shit y'all doing, but I know how to work a hit record. Right. I said, if this shit don't go, I won't say nothing else to y'all when I got a Bay Bay. Mm. Mm -hmm. And... You already know what that did. Oh, yeah. And that, that was the end of Pete Stones. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was too there. hard too early. Yeah. 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 I seen that because we had a lot of those Pete Stone flyer things. At, Get like at, me. At 97.9. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, that was it. Yeah. That, that was me, it. Bro. That nigga, I gave that nigga a car dog. He <laughs> left that bitch in Birmingham sitting on bricks. What? Yes. A, a Chrysler 300. Yep. <laughs> oh, Literally. Oh. I got that bitch back. I don't know if you remember I had a Smurf mobile. Yeah. That was that. I got oh. it back and painted that bitch spurf. Yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that little nigga. Now just oh, <laughs> he ain't gonna see this. Yeah. No, 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 for real. That's that was the mentality back then. But that was one of them life lessons that you know you once you in that position, you might as well be Jimmy or one of them white boys because right. that's how the artist gonna look at you. You never yeah. gonna be their friend when business is involved. Yeah. yeah. They don't love you while everything's going great. Man. Right. Take, take James to me like man, that nigga they're fucking up, but spurf like. Chop your legs off. Yeah. It was a lot going on. But guess what? I got my check. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Collin yeah. Park, DJ Smurf. So we oh, got man. One, one more question, back. man, before you go is, what's next? What's next for Mr. College Park, I got DJ a record. Smurf? I'm going to give y'all, because I want y'all opinion on it, um, a new vibe that I'm testing out. Is that and the I cowboy can't... thing? No. You brought it's not it's some, Tell him. It's some reggae nigga shit. <laughs> reggae is nigga it's, shit. It's a reggae strip club nigga, nigga shit. shit. A town shit. So you already got what we were asking about. Something exactly. completely different. I don't different. know. You know when you do the shit, you always think the shit. But y'all the y'all the, the the DJ DJ. Well, you got. Uh, well, you know I gotta ask you to come to New Music Monday because like you've been supporting us since we started. Like right. one of our first few checks we got that kind of helped us get started. You was one of the guys that came in and said, "Hey man, if you guys gonna do this, I'm gonna go ahead and." I got a couple records and a couple artists I'm doing. Y'all helped me get my record going, and you've always supported us from day one when it was just four of us. You know what I'm saying? Wow, wow. You know what I'm saying? Time we, go by so fast, you forget. Come shit on, like bro. That. Like You're I remember 16. that. I remember, I remember wow. calling, going, man, Smurf ain't gonna give us no money, man. <laughs> <laughs> I cut that motherfucking check. I was cutting he, them checks back then. I was making jackets. The, I was cutting checks. I was doing the, everything. Yeah, when he cut the check, I said. Yeah, the Smurf, that's my motherfucking boy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We always been like that, though. Yeah, you we know, always we always been, like been cool. But I, but but when they came and, and they was like, man, Smurf, Smurf want us to do this, Smurf want us to do that, I was like, well, shit, well, what's Smurf going to do? And then he was like, well, Smurf going to cut a check. And I was like, what's Smurf ain't going to cut no check? And boy, when X ready called back and say, man, Smurf on the way with the check, I said, oh, shit. Yeah. That's my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout yeah, out to nah. Smurf, goddamn. Shout out yeah. to Smurf. Yeah. Smurf. Yeah. 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 This is the We Outside Show. Shout out to DJ Smurf, the legendary Mr. Collie Park. Man, we out of here. Make sure y'all follow us on all platforms. This is the We Outside Show, and we are outside. Yeah. Hey.